Greetings, greetings, greetings. Today's episode will be the continuing read of Abani's song written by P. Jelly Clark and read by me, Blisby. Read and reviewed by me, Blisby. So we left off last episode with um, chapter 10 where there was a lot of loss. The small family, Abani, Auntie Asha, Obi, the garden, the home, <sighs> suffered great loss at the hands of the witch priest's um, servant, the shadow, and um, the home was lost to fire, and the, the not only the home, but all those doors that were the cosmic gateways, and the masks, the pots, the culture that was behind those doors. That she was the Auntie Asha was a caretaker of the culture, and um, so that was lost. The garden was lost. Obi got blown to smithereens, bits and pieces, um, by the shadow man, and um, Auntie Asha lost her life. After living all those centuries, seems like she lost her life to the shadow man. And um, all that was left was Abeni, her staff, her fighting stick, um, Auntie Asha's magic bag, because she had it with her when she went out to the forest earlier in the in the day, in the night. And... Um, the lessons that Abeni learned over her her year, her time with Auntie Asha, the magic house, the pots, the cosmic gateways, Obi, the garden, the stars, the forest, all her lessons, all her lessons. So and now we come to part two of the book. Where does she go after this? Her second great loss. She witnessed so much. She witnessed her family being kidnapped. She witnessed her village being destroyed by fire and just destruction. Um, She witnessed Obi being destroyed. She witnessed Auntie Asha being killed. Oh my gosh. Wow. Right in front of her eyes. So where does she go from here let's get into it part 2 chapter 11 Asha Abeni lay on her back in Auntie Asha's garden gazing up at a blue sky and slow moving wispy late day clouds sitting up she saw she wasn't alone Across from her sat a little girl who stared up at the sky as well. She looked down to Abeni with large dark eyes, then waved and smiled. Abeni lifted a hand and waved back, uncertainly, then stopped. This was a dream. The call of birds brought Abeni awake. Opening her eyes, she shifted her cramped legs, coming out of the ball she'd curled into. The flowing stream nearby babbled softly with the other sounds of the forest, and through the trees she could see the sun halfway rising in a dull sky. No wispy clouds. It was still morning. Pushing up, she spied a broad wooden hat with a pointed top sitting alone on a mound of straw. Her heart sank. Obi. Oh, poor Obi. That hadn't been a dream. Memories of the past night came rushing back. The shadow thing, the fire, Auntie Asha. The loss hit all over again, and a familiar numbness crept over her. Not sadness, but a feeling of emptiness, as if nothing mattered. 
Maybe she should try to cry. That seemed the proper thing to do. Crying won't bring them back, a voice whispered. You should know that by now. She let out a long breath. The emptiness sat on her shoulder, on her shoulders like a heavy stone, and she didn't know how to rid herself of it. Maybe the way to start was facing what she was avoiding. Bracing herself, she turned to the one place she didn't want to look. And there, under the shade of a tall tree that grew up and bent over, lay a brown dress and several colorful shawls. Auntie Asha, just where she had left her before collapsing into sleep. A sharp pain cut through the emptiness at seeing the old woman's body. Still and... Wait. Abeni frowned, squinting through the morning sunlight. Something was wrong. Going to her hands and knees, she scrambled over for a better look and stopped in disbelief. There were only clothes here. Empty clothes. Auntie Asha was gone, as if someone had just spirited the body away. What in the world was going on? A sudden squeal made her jump. She spun around, looking about to find a girl. Abeni blinked. Was she seeing things? No, the girl was still there. She couldn't have seen five, certainly no more than six harvest seasons. Her hair was a deep black that hung in thick twisted locks down her back and she was as naked as a baby showing every bit of her rich brown skin. She sat in a shallow part of the stream splashing and laughing giddily. A baby stared. Since she'd begun living with the old woman she hadn't seen or met any other people. Rising she got to her feet and walked to the edge of the stream. Excuse me, she began. The girl looked up and Abeni gasped. The large dark eyes staring back were more than familiar. This was the little girl from her dream, the one who had waved to her. At seeing Abeni, she smiled, a big bright smile. Good morning, she greeted her in a high voice. Good morning. Abeni replied slowly. A thought came to her. Am I in a dream? The girl scrunched up her small face, sticking out a pink tongue to lick at the air. No, she said. Dreams taste different. Abeni blinked. What? Are you from a nearby village? Where's your family? The girl shrugged. Abeni tried again. There was someone over there. Did your people take her? The girl's eyes followed to where she gestured at the bundle of Auntie Asha's clothes before she gave another shrug. Abeni was growing irritated. I don't know what's going on, she said, putting on the voice grown-ups did when they meant to be serious. But whoever you're with... I want to talk to them. I want to know what they did with the old woman right now. The blank stare she got back only fed her frustration. Are you even listening? The girl nodded slowly but still said nothing. Abeni put her head in her hands, trying to contain her temper. Little girl, you can't be out here alone. Just tell me who you're with. The girl smiled at that. I am not here alone. I'm here with you, little rainbringer. Abeni started, little rainbringer? How could this girl know about that? The last person who used that nickname was... Something in Abeni's mind flicked to life. She glanced to the empty clothes where the old woman had vanished and back to the little girl who sat naked in the stream. Then she looked at her, bent down low and really looked at her. 
that thick hair of locks, that face, those dark eyes, familiar eyes. No. She shook her head. It couldn't be. It can't be. Her voice came in the barest whisper. Auntie Asha? The girl scrunched up her face again and thought. Asha, she sounded. Her head bobbed up and down as if remembering. Yes, I think I was Asha once. That was when Abeni fell down. Her legs went weak like they'd been turned to water. She landed hard on the ground and just sat there, her eyes wide and round. Was this a trick? Yes, someone had to be playing a joke on her. That was it. Yet there were those eyes. But I saw, Abeni stammered words through clenched teeth. You died. The, the girl lifted her fingers to draw a big O in the air. Death, life, all a circle. Abeni shook her head. No, not for people. People grow old. Then they die. They don't come back. They don't turn into children. No, the girl agreed. Not people. Abeni glared. What does she mean, not people? If not people, then when the answer came, she might have fallen a second time if she wasn't already sitting down. Not people? Not people? Not people? It came out in a breathless gasp. You're a spirit. The girl smiled in answer before looking down to find her reflection in the water, bending close to inspect it. Abeni's mouth hung limp. The girl. Auntie Asha was a spirit. People had called her an old woman. Some said she was a witch, but all of them had been wrong. She was really a spirit. A spirit. Spirit! How could no one in her village have known? How could she not have known? After all this time, not living in a witch's house, not living with some old woman, she'd been in the home of a spirit. Her mind was a jumble. She ran through everything she knew about spirits, spirits, which admittedly wasn't much. In her village, people offered prayers to spirits or called on them when needed. Sometimes, like during Harvest Festival, they honored them and gave them thanks. They were supposed to be everywhere, in the rivers, the trees, the sky, and they could look like anything. She supposed that included old women and little girls. Abeni wet her mouth, realizing it had gone dry. You said you think you were Asha once. Are you still her? No, the girl answered, still staring at her reflection. And yes, Abeni shook her head. I don't understand. I'm not Auntie Asha anymore, the girl said. Not exactly. If I think really, really hard, I can remember being her. But it's not the same. It's like, like, she fumbled for words. Like trying to remember someone else's dream, Abeni finished. The little girl's eyes went round and she nodded eagerly. Yes, like that. You told me that once, Abeni said, when you were still. She couldn't even find the right words. A sudden thought occurred. Have you ever been little before? The girl didn't answer right away. She'd taken to making faces at her reflection, 
wrinkling her nose while pushing out her lips. I've been a girl, a woman, and an old woman. Lots of times. A Benny gaped. Lots of times. You've done this. Died. Many times already? The little girl lifted small hands to make the O again. Like I said, all a circle. A Benny frowned at this. From what she knew, Auntie Asha had been around since her village's founding. Before her parents, their parents, and their parents. Well, it had been long ago. In all that time, she'd been called the old woman. If she'd been a little girl, it was before her village even existed. That meant she stayed old a very long time. That's why you wanted a child, she whispered. The agreement you made with my village. You didn't just need someone to care for you because you were old. When you die, you become a little girl. You needed someone to take care of you when you became little again. The girl looked up. Her face was serious now, at least as serious as a little girl's face could be. I needed a guardian. I still do. Guardian? Benny reared back. But I can't look after you. You need a grown-up. The girl sighed. An odd thing on her small face. I was supposed to have more time to teach you. So when I was ready to be small again, you would be grown up already. Then you could look after me until I remembered how to look after myself. Only it didn't work out that way. Abeni stared as it all sank in. She was supposed to look after a little girl who was really a spirit. She was supposed to raise her and take care of her. She hadn't seen but 12 harvest seasons when she arrived in the old woman's house. She'd only seen 13. Now, I can't do this. Her voice shook. You expect me to take care of you? You are supposed to take care of me. Instead, you've left me here alone. You've left me alone all over again. And now you're asking me to do things I can't do. She was shouting. Her confusion turning to hurt and anger that made her head throb. It wasn't fair. Let anyone expect it so much from her. The little girl shrank into herself, dark eyes widening as fear spread across her face. Then she did something completely unexpected. She began to cry. Avani was so surprised that she stopped shouting. For a moment, she knelt there, stunned, not knowing what to do. She'd never seen Auntie Asha cry. She couldn't even imagine the old woman crying, but this little girl was weeping, tears streaming down her cheeks as her lips trembled. The hurt on her small face was more than Abeni could bear, and she felt suddenly ashamed. She reached out, pulling the girl into an embrace. No, don't cry. I shouldn't have yelled at you. Please, Auntie Asha, don't cry. The girl sobbed against Abeni's chest, her face buried in a nest of thick locks, now the color of black earth instead of ivory. I'm sorry, she wailed. I didn't mean for this to happen. Not so soon. Abeni hugged her close. None of them had meant for any of this to happen. Who could have possibly known that she would be sitting here, holding a small girl who had once held her? It was all so strange. She needed to know more. The shadow thing. She shuddered to even name it. You knew it was coming. The little girl pushed back to look up with puffy eyes. I hid 
from it for a long time, and it found me. But then you came back. You saved me. I wonder if that's what was supposed to happen. Abeni couldn't make sense of much of that, but she nodded anyway. For a long while, the two sat there, quiet in their own thoughts. Something still tugged at Abeni, pieces of the puzzle she was trying to sort out. The shadow thing works for the witch priest, doesn't it? Like those riders on the giant bats? The little girl's eyes drew tight. For a moment, her face looked a lot like Auntie Asha's, filled with a dark and knowing intensity. When she spoke, it even sounded more like the old woman's voice. The shadow is one of his oldest minions. Why did he send it after you? What does he want? He wants me to join him. He believes I can make him stronger. It's why he keeps hunting me, why he sent his armies into the forest. And Benny frowned. Her mind latched onto those words. Why he sent his armies into this forest. The storm women. They were looking for you. The little girl lowered her head to stare at her hands, not meeting Abeni's eyes. The night before I came to your village, I saw the shadow in the sky. I hid myself away, hid my home. But the magic, I couldn't. Your people have cut back the trees to graze goats to build your homes. There were not enough green things to grow up and conceal you. Abeni listened, feeling as if she'd been struck. The witch priest's armies hadn't come to her village by chance. They had come for Auntie Asha, and their village had just been in their way. If the storm women hadn't been hunting her, they might have never come into the forest at all. Her village might never have been destroyed. No one might have ever been taken away. That terrible day might have never happened. Auntie Asha hadn't told her. It had been another one of her secrets. Abeni should have been angry. Furious. But she was angry with an old woman. Not a little girl. And she just felt tired tired of grown-ups and their secrets. Her parents and all the adults of her village had kept secrets. Auntie Asha kept many, many secrets. And where had that gotten them all? Closing her eyes, she took a deep breath and buried away those thoughts because she didn't know what to do with them. Not now. When she opened her eyes again, she found the girl looking at her with an anxious expression. What are you going to do now? Abeni asked. Where are you going to live? The little girl shook her head, her thick locks swaying. Of course she didn't know. Auntie Asha would have known, but whatever this little girl was, she wasn't the old woman. Not anymore. The two of them were out here alone, without a home, without a village, without family. Abeni stopped. No, not without family. She looked at the little girl as an idea took root. An idea formed from hope, desperation, and if she was being honest, a bit of spite. You have a sister. Do you remember? The little girl stared blankly before her eyes grew wide. She bobbed her head in excitement. Yes, I have a sister. Is she a spirit like you? The little girl nodded again. She takes care of a village like I took care of yours. Then you should go there, Benny said, to your sister. She can take you in. The little girl beamed at the suggestion before her smile faded. Oh no, I remember now. My sister's village, the children, he took them. Abeni had already thought of this. She leaned forward. You mean the man 
in the goat horn mask, the one with the flute. The girl made a face. He's very bad. But you need your sister's help, Abeni urged her. What if that shadow thing comes looking for you again? Or those riders on the giant bats? You need someone who can protect you. Someone who knows about a man in a goat horn mask with an enchanted enchanted flute, a voice in her head whispered, who knows about ghost ships. She faltered for a moment. Who's keeping secrets now, the voice whispered guiltily. No, this was different. Grown-ups were the ones who started this whole business of keeping secrets. If she wanted to save her family and her friends, she would need to learn how to keep secrets too. She wouldn't like it, but she would do whatever it took. Besides, the scrying pot had said the children of night. To free them, you must seek them. Well, the pot had actually said more than that. It said to beware the children of night. That to find them, she risked losing herself. But she was certain it was talking about her friends, and she intended to save them, whatever the risk. I think you must go to your sister, she said. Do you know the way? The little girl looked confused, like any little girl would, unsure of the questions being put to her. My sister is very far, very far away. Outside this forest, I don't know if I can get there alone. Her dark eyes brightened. Will you come with me, Abeni? I'm sure my sister will take you in too. Please say you will. You're the only one I can trust. Abeni had been waiting for this. She wanted this, but that last part still made her voice catch and her face flushed with guilt. She would never have been able to convince grown-up Auntie Asha of such a thing. To go chasing after the man in the goat horn mask. She was taking advantage. She knew that, and it was wrong. But they did need to find Auntie Asha's sister. Benny couldn't be a guardian. Not to some little girl who was really a spirit who was being hunted by shadow things. Getting her to her sister would be best for everyone. She told herself that made all this all right, and she thought she mostly believed it. Of course, she answered. I'll come with you. The little girl squealed and wrapped her in a tight hug. Abeni sat there feeling awkward at first, then slowly hugged her back. What do I even call you now? The little girl pulled away. What did you call me before? Auntie Asha. She wrinkled a small nose. That might sound silly now. Abeni managed a faint smile. It probably would. Then just call me Asha. Fine, just call me Asha. She reached out to tweak her nose, which felt just like any other little girl's nose. Let's find you something to wear. They spent a while rooting through the discarded bundle, ripping pieces of clothing and cutting them into size. Abeni wrapped the little girl in the brown fabric, which made a nice little dress. She made out several other pieces, folded them, and placed them into the magic bag, which she thankfully held on to. Shoes were another problem, but with a lot of cutting and stitching, they turned the old woman's sandals into something usable. Abeni got a bit sad as she remembered her gold dress. It had probably burned up in the fire, or so she thought, until she reached inside the bag and felt something familiar. Pulling it out, she found in surprise it was a smaller bag, the one that held her birthday dress, sandals, and jewelry. I thought you might want that, Asha said. She was wearing a yellow shawl that draped her small body, and she sat picking through her mini necklaces and bracelets. So I put it in there before you went out. Thank you, Abeni said. She paused. I thought last night I'd lost you forever. I'm glad to have you back even if different. The little girl gave her a bright smile. I am glad to be back, little rainbringer. 
and Benny shook her head. How could she ever get used to that? Then something came to her. Asha, were you in my dream earlier? Just this morning? The girl nodded. Mm-hmm. I miss my garden, and you remember it better. Abeni didn't reply to that. Oh, yes. The time ahead was going to be very strange. Suddenly, the weight of what she was about to do fell upon her. She was set to follow this girl, this spirit, into the bush. She knew nothing about the rest of the forest or the world outside. It could be dangerous out there. It was dangerous. Panic seized her. Her heart pounded. Sweat broke out across her skin and her legs refused to move. Asha looked up at her, then quietly placed a small hand inside her own. I remember your mother, the little girl said. She was very strong, even when she was afraid. You remind me of her. Abeni stared at the girl, recalling her mother standing before the storm woman, frightened but determined. At once her fears receded, and not gone completely, but enough to let her draw in deep calming breaths as her legs took the first few steps into the unknown. So Auntie Asha is not a witch or an old woman. She's a spirit. She's the spirit assigned to that forest. And she was there before the people came and when the people came because that's her forest. So that's why the bats, all of them, they, they don't, she could do what, whatever in that forest. Um, even for a long time, a very, very, very long time, protected from anything from the outside that was coming to destroy it. But because the people who had come to call that forest home and made a village out of it had started to cut away too many of the trees, not knowing, I don't know if she warned them about that, but they cut away so many of the trees that when it came time to do what she did to keep them hidden and protected from entities like the witch priest, there weren't enough trees to join in her work, her magic work. So while she could protect herself for for a longer period of time, she just didn't have enough trees to help cover the village. And then, you know, the storm women and the, the man with the gold horn mask and the witch priests came through looking for her and destroying, stealing lives along the way and destroying things along the way. Um, trying to get her light to join his darkness. So, wow. Wow. And it's hard um, for a Benny, even though she grew up in the village and knew of spirits, the possibility of it is different than like the abstract of something is different than facing the reality of it. Like an abstract thought is one thing, but when it comes to something in your reality, you gotta face it like one-on-one, it, it, it's real. The adjustment, but um, all of it makes sense how she had access to those cosmic gateways, the doors, all of that. She was a level, a, level way up past just the village healer who could you know commune with nature and put the herbs together and heal people from this and and the elders knew who Asha was but yeah if you don't if you don't pass it down then how are the young people to know um it reminds me of I've learned recently 
past few years about how Orisha in the Yoruba tradition um, are spirits and um, they take on aspects like the wind, the elements of nature, the wind and water and fire and thunder, shango, all that stuff. Um, But yeah. So this adventure is going to be interesting. I mean, they're alone, but it's not like a regular um, teenager and little girl walking through the forest. So even though Asha is not like full elder Asha, she's still Asha. She's still a spirit. Very, very, very young spirit, though. Trying to be guided by a Benny. And a Benny is not just some regular teenager either. Because she was trained by Elder Asha before Asha became the little girl. So Abeni got some, you know, she got some skills that I'm sure she'll be able to tap into if, no, not if, when they face things on their journey to find Asha's sister. Ah, this is definitely going to be an interesting journey. Until next chapter. several meanings and one meaning is alive and well another meaning is hope and another meaning is life as with all African names there's specific meaning so alive and well hope and life makes sense that the spirit's name means all of that mm. now until next chapter.